And hello, we are live, live, live. And the topic today is how to maximize your wardrobe without spending a dime on clothes. All right, who's having a great Monday? I know I am, I'm excited. So a little team meeting, so pumped on Team LM. It is just a happy, happy day, even though in LA it's really cold. Oh, I've helped you so much. That makes me so happy, thank you. So let's talk about clothes and maximizing our wardrobes. So I'm about to sound like a total old ass, but kids these days with their social media and the pressure that these platforms put on us to always have a brand new outfit. It's so crazy to me how the idea of, you know, repeating an outfit because we've already been photographed in it is something that regular real people are saying. You're not a celebrity. <laughs> I'm not a celebrity. You're not a celebrity. We can wear clothes more than one time. This whole like pop and tags culture, it needs to be stopped. It was interesting. I listened to this podcast a couple years ago. It's a really, really good episode. If you uh, listen to How I Built This by NPR, they interview really incredible entrepreneurs, like super famous ones, like person who created Airbnb and like big time stuff. And you get in behind their origin story and how they created their business. So I listened to an interview with the founder of Rent the Runway. And I've never been a like I've never even been interested in Rent the Runway. I've never tried Rent the Runway. It's just, I like to own my stuff. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. I just like to, I like to have it forever until I'm sick of it and then I'll consign it. But anyway, so I listened to her interview and really brilliant woman, um, really brilliant business model. Um, I think it's great if that's, if that's your thing. But she was talking about how Rent the Runway came to be, and a lot of it came to be from this social media culture where she said, I think it was her sister, if I'm remembering the story properly, but her sister had, you know, somewhere to go and was like, I already wore that outfit. Like it was already posted on Facebook. Like I can't, no, like I need something new. And she's like, wow, there is this need for people to have new items all the time, but they only can wear them once. So it doesn't make good financial sense or sense for the environment to be purchasing a new outfit for every freaking occasion of your life. <laughs> so she came up with Rent the Runway so you can always have something new on and you don't have to fully invest in your wardrobe and then you can give it back when you're done. So that's not what this is about. This is about something different but it just speaks to that culture that we're in today where we think because we posted it once, it's no good anymore um, that the pages of Instagram are like the freaking pages of Us Weekly, <laughs> you know, like get over yourself. Um, we should own clothing that we love so much that it doesn't matter if we wear it again and again and again. You're gonna see this Metallica shirt again and again and again, just like you've seen my other Metallica shirt again and again and again, I rewear my clothes. And it's funny because when I was younger, and you'll read the story in my upcoming book, I didn't realize that I really got programmed to not repeat outfits based on something that had happened in my childhood. Super like, small, seemingly insignificant, but it really made an impact on me and made me not want to repeat outfits ever. So I would constantly shop, 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 buy new clothes all the time, <laughs> like all the time, put myself into a tremendous amount of debt because I always wanted to chase that high of having a new outfit. I didn't want to look like 
you know, oh, what, you're poor? You, like, wear the same clothes all the time? No, I'm not poor. I make good sense. Hello? I got this shirt. I'm going to wear it. But I had been unknowingly brainwashed into thinking that was horrible and was constantly chasing that new clothes high that I always have on something different. So what I've realized is if you seek variety in your wardrobe, if you don't always want to have the same outfit on, because I see women get into that trap as well, where they can only figure out one way to wear an outfit, and then they always wear that outfit. It's like, cool, that's my Tuesday outfit. <laughs> These are the five outfits I wear to work, and I just keep wearing those outfits until I'm completely sick of them, and then buy all new outfits. <laughs> um, really, the goal is to have a functional wardrobe in which you can wear all your things over and over and over again in completely different ways. So it looks like you've never repeated an outfit. I can tell you that my closet is very small. People are very surprised at how small my closet is, especially because in my old place, I literally had an entire bedroom that was just my closet. That was extra Lauren, don't repeat an outfit, have new shit all the time. Now my closet is teeny tiny. Um, I try to keep as few things in there as possible, but people think that I don't repeat outfits. The people that I see in person in my life are like, you always have on a new outfit. I don't, <laughs> I do not. I know how to maximize the things in my closet. So I'm always fresh, I'm always new. I always feel reinvented but I still always feel very much me. And I think the one of the secrets to really feeling like yourself and owning yourself in your wardrobe are having pieces that are just you. And you don't have to have 50 of them. <laughs> I was shopping yesterday at my favorite vintage store in LA and I was admiring these pieces of clothing that I'm like, oh, this is so beautiful, but you know, it's just not me. So I can just look at it and I can just put it the fuck back on the rack. <laughs> you don't have to buy everything that you like. Um, but yeah, the guy at the store, one of the owners was like, yeah, he goes, I feel like your style is, is a super defined. He goes, when I think of your style, I think of, you know, nineties designer and like rock and roll. <laughs> and I was like, that's totally it. So I have my couple rock and roll t-shirts. I got some of my, you know, awesome, iconic 90s fashion pieces, my little Fendi back there. Um, it's just, it's me. So I can have these tiny, you know, little variety of, of, of clothing and I can mix and match them and make them really expand. So, you know, this is a call for buying less. <laughs> buying less, where the fashion industry wants you to think that you have to buy more. It's about buying less. Buying less or no, the goal should be no fast fashion, no more cheap ass online clothing hauls that we love to just, you know, gawk at on the internet. If I see one more haul of like, whether it's designer or Zara or whatever, it's like, damn, Gina, why did you have to buy so much shit? No more fast fashion, no more hauls, and it's time to start getting creative with what you have so you can maximize what's in your closet. So all of this sounds good in theory, right? And people are probably like, ooh, I'm gonna get in my closet and start having fun right now. But there's a reason why we don't do this. There's a reason why we think that this all sounds great, but at the end of the day, when we open up our closet doors and we think that we don't have anything to wear, our first reaction is, I better go shopping, because we're conditioned to have that behavior, because that behavior is familiar, and even though it costs money, even though it costs time to go out and do that shopping all the time, it's easier for our brain because we've already done it that way so many times. Just like if you wanted to become healthy and eat better 
and have more vegetables and know what's going into your food, you would just grocery shop and cook your own food. <laughs> it's not rocket science. Anyone's like, I can't figure out how to lose weight. We all know exactly how to lose weight. We all know exactly how to be healthier. It's just easier to order Postmates and our brain is conditioned to do that. Oh my gosh, I'm freaking starving. I just can't think. I know I should cook. I could just go on Pinterest and pull up a recipe. I know that, but I'm hungry. I'm just going to order food. That's the same behavior we do with our closets. I know that there's clothes in there. I know that I could have a fresh outfit that I've never put on before, but I'm conditioned to go online and add to cart and have that shit Amazon Primed to be here the next day or have that shit overnighted on net a porte to have my outfit the next day. So the solution is to recondition yourself to do different behaviors. So what do we need to do to recondition our minds and behaviors is one, we need the right path. We need a path that's proven, that works, we need to be taught that path. It can't just be theory. That's why, you know, going back to diet and exercise, we know that if we cook and we choose our ingredients, then we'll make healthier choices that will help us reach our goal. But we might not know exactly. So maybe we hire a nutritionist to make sure that we're eating the right things that work with our body composition that work the best. Maybe we know that if we exercise, that's good for us, but if we hire a trainer who tells us the right types of workouts to get the right types of results, then that will get us on the path to do it better. So we need the path and we need repetition and we need accountability. So. I just launched, relaunched Personal Style University. This is the 2.0 version. It's brand new, new videos, new worksheets, new everything. And women have been signing up and getting inside of the program since last Wednesday. And they're posting their selfies and they're excited about taking this new path. And one of them posted, she's like, oh shit. She's like, I'm gonna need a little extra accountability. And she's been through PSU multiple times, but she understands it's not just a matter of, I should do the steps. Like she knows what the steps are. She's done it multiple times, but it's having that guide and it's having that accountability. So now she has some accountability partners inside of the program that can make sure she's posting the selfies, that can make sure she's doing her outfit planning, that's making sure that she's building these new style uniforms for this new phase in her life. It's getting conditioned. So anytime she's in a style rut, she knows that she can go to this path instead of the path of, I'm just gonna go shopping, you know? Cause we know the right thing to do, but we don't do it. So we need to have something and someone there to say, this is how you're doing. You know, this is what you're doing. Yes, you're doing it right. And yes, keep going. There's things in my business, like I just had a meeting with my team that I'm like, okay, I know in my brain, I should be doing these particular things for this avenue of the business, but I'm like, I'm overwhelmed by it. Logically, I know what to do, I know what I should do, I'm overwhelmed, I need help. So we're hiring for this certain position now because I need someone who has a more clearly defined path. Like if I know the path is like this, the path is like do stuff, go this way. But when someone else comes in that has a more clearly defined path, they're like, no, the pathway is actually like this. And then if you go this way, you'll actually get there faster than just going like this. So it, that's what it's all about. It's about, not spending the easy money on the quick fix. Everyone bitches about money, things cost money. Oh my gosh, Lauren, I can't get a business coach. I don't have money for that. 
oh, but you do have money for continuing to make the same business mistakes over and over again. Okay, so you have money for that. Lauren, I don't have money to learn how to shop and style for myself you know, properly through one of your programs or your memberships, like that's too much money. Oh, but you do have money to go buy some crap clothes at the mall that you'll wear once and you didn't buy the right stuff, so you can't even consign it to recoup some of your money, so you have money for that. Oh, okay, cool. So it's choosing the path that's gonna get you the best outcome. It's not taking the easy route and choosing the route that maybe, you know, cost a little more money up front or cost a little bit more time up front, but in the long run, you're chilling, right? Like, I've been super proud of myself because I have only ordered Postmates once this year, once, and it's because I had friends over to watch a movie, so we ordered delivery. Um, I've been a little cooking machine <laughs> because does it cost me a little bit more seemingly upfront? I have like a fresh um, vegetable delivery and then I order the rest of my dry ingredients online. Um, I have to take the time out to cook, but I feel so much better. And I know that I'm making better habits for the future where the quick fix would just be pick up some food at the restaurant on the way home from yoga, right? So looking at the week of like ordering the groceries, cooking, planning the recipes, all that shit, you're like, oh my God, seriously? Can I just pay $20 and order Postmates? No, but what happens when I pay $20 every day for two meals a day um, all the time? I'm gonna feel sluggish, I'm gonna gain weight, I'm gonna be unhappy. So you take the quick fix or you take the long way that gives you all of the great results in the end. So can we stop being addicted to fast fashion, being addicted to always having a new outfit, or can we make ourselves a new habit and a new <laughs> addiction of shopping smarter, learning how to put outfits together in a way where I can take this shirt and I promise you I can make at least a dozen different outfits with this. Did that take a new skill set? Yes. Did that take time? Yes. But does that save me from buying 12 other fucking t-shirts? Yes. I only need the one. So can you do that instead? Can you invest in the time, the money, the, you know, t the, uh, the, the practice, the, the times where you stumble, the times where you don't do it perfectly? Can you do that to save yourself this crazy all over the place style that you'll get from buying too much, uh, from filling landfills with really ugly, crappy <laughs> clothes. <laughs> like, can you do that? So it's just something to think about. Um, when you have nothing to wear, you do have something to wear. It's just a different path that you haven't taken before. And are you willing to try that? It's so funny, there's someone, um, this woman who just joined Personal Style University, and I offer either you pay in full or you can break it up into three payment plans. And she was like, you know what? She's like, I was worried about the money, but I knew that I had to do this level, I just had to level up. So she's like, I just pulled out my credit card and I plunked down the money. I wasn't sure how I was gonna pay it, but I just did it. And she's like, literally the next day, she got this job offer that totally paid for, you know, personal style university plus some, she now has a raise forever. And she's going to know how to dress herself for this job without blowing her whole paycheck, trying to get a new outfit for every freaking day of work. So it's making that leap. Um, someone posted in the comments, you know, jump in the net will appear. That's been the story of my life. Um, it's about doing something different. And when you do something different, there's a snowball effect of how everything else shows up different for you. Like she took a risk, she took a risk in investing into her future, both her appearance, but how that appearance helps her show up in her life. And then immediately the universe was like, you're on the right track, here's a raise. So this investment you made, covered. And you're gonna be set 
because you've just educated yourself on how to maximize your wardrobe, dress for the person that you are building instead of some old dusty person in the past, do things differently. That is the theme. Anytime I make a mistake in my life, business, style, anything personal, it's always a learning opportunity. What could I have done different? What behaviors had I always been doing that got me back into the same place? And what could I do to break those behaviors? If it's like, gee whiz, every time I work really hard and get in shape and then think that I deserve to chill and like eat like shit, I'll gain more weight back or I'll get more tired. What was I doing that made me do that every single time? Okay, cool. What can I do different this time? Um, every time I drive myself into debt because I keep buying clothes and I don't wear them, what behaviors did I do to get there? What if I didn't do those anymore? What if I tried something different? And then I'm always blown away by the new results that I get. I never thought that I would see the day where I had such a small streamline wardrobe where I always feel good in what I wear, where I always have something on that's different, but it's built with the same amazing team you know, of garments in my wardrobe. I never thought I'd see the day, but that's because I decided to do things different. I never thought I'd see the day where, oops, all right, we're back Instagram. I never thought I'd see the day where I would wake up and not be stressed out by opening my closet doors. I decided to do things different. So I don't have closet meltdowns. I don't cry in my closet. I used to cry. I don't have anything to wear. And he's picking me up for dinner in 20 minutes. That shit doesn't happen anymore because I chose different behaviors. I chose to invest in the process rather than investing in the product, you know, always the product, always the garment, invest in the process and everything becomes easier. So that's that, um, my phone's ringing, so I gotta go and get some work done. Um, but thanks for tuning in and just a friendly reminder that February 7th, which is Friday, is the last day to enroll in Personal Style University. That is where I teach you this entire blueprint on how to build a wardrobe that actually looks and feels like you, how to come up with new outfits, how to outfit plan, how to shop smarter, how to use style to elevate your whole entire life, not just the way that you look, but to elevate so you can get job promotions, so you can get dates, so everything just works better in your life. If you want that, you have until February 7th to enroll and it's super fun. You get to have live chats with me um, every week for the first six weeks. You get in a private community where you can post pictures of your outfits. You can get feedback from me and the rest of the community. So if you've ever wanted to work with me as your stylist, that is the way. Um, LauraMessiah.com slash PSU. You have until the 7th and enjoy the rest of your Monday. Peace.